name is Mike Aben and welcome to my KSP campaign. Oh my goodness, do we have a lot of stuff happening in this particular episode. I have absolutely no time to waste, so we are going right away with Valentina and Stella aboard the Columbia Space Shuttle going for its second launch. Now you might recall uh, a few episodes ago I had a little bit of issues with the Columbia. It was able to get into orbit on its inaugural launch, but uh, its ascent was uh, a little bit too shallow and that uh, made its ascent well, not quite as efficient as it probably should be. So I did a couple of things to fix it, though I'll be the first to admit I got a little bit lazy. Uh, number one is I replaced that TT-70 radial decoupler between the shuttle and the liquid fuel booster uh, with one of those uh, hydraulic detachment manifolds because it brings the orbiter closer to the booster, which means that the thrust doesn't shift up and down quite so far. I extended the nose cone out a little bit, um, mostly actually just so that the thrust coming off those Werner engines isn't blowing right onto the orbiter. And But the biggest thing I did is I changed my ascent profile so it doesn't go up inverted, it goes right side up as you can see here. And in that way, as um, the thrust becomes invalid, it has a tendency to tilt up to pitch up rather than to pitch down because before I had it upside down uh, I don't know it feels like a bit of a cheat to be honest what I probably should have done and what I think I probably will do I'll experiment with this is uh, just put more powerful engines on the orbiter that will balance the thrust a lot better but anyway uh, let's cut to the release of our payload which is actually, unfortunately, another example of my laziness. Uh, a long time viewers might recognize this as one of my junk sats. It actually is exactly one of my old junk sats with just a little bit of the fuel taken out of it. That's why it's got these crappy little batteries and the old static solar panels and all of that kind of stuff. But I figured it will function perfectly fine as a Minmus communications satellite because although remote tech is convinced I have a complete network around Minmus, I know that I don't and I know that I need a third satellite in orbit to complete my coverage around Minmus. So that is where this thing is off to. And you might also recall uh, from the last time that the Columbia performed a descent that I decided to ignore trajectories and that ended up being a mistake as I fell well short of the Kerbal Space Center and had to ditch into the ocean that is to the west of the Kerbal Space Center. So this time, I'm not gonna be ignoring trajectories. I'm going to pay very careful attention to tra trajectories and use it to plan my descent. Though, as you can see here, trajectories is predicting a bit short. But uh, I do manage to pull this one off and put it right down in the runway, as you will see, well, in just a moment. But while this thing is descending, uh, let's talk about this episode. Main thing about this episode is my attempt to capture that B-class asteroid using the RMB around Kerbin. That's the main thing I want to get to. I want you to show. I want to show you that particular attempt at a capture. And because I do want to really show you that in this particular episode, I'm going to blast through a whole lot of missions in the meantime. And when I mean blast through, I mean blast through. There are all kinds of things you've seen before, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time with it. But in the process of all of these missions, I do polish off four contracts, uh, abort, or at least postpone, two other contracts, and uh, and then finally we'll get to uh, to the RMB and my capture. So a lot of stuff coming at you very, very quickly. Don't blink. But let's start by actually going out and visiting the RMB. So we have now just entered into Kerbin's sphere of influence. And what I want to do is adjust my trajectory and adjust my arrow braking. I want to do the lightest of arrow braking. So I'm just going to adjust my attitude towards the radially out vector and I am paying close attention to my electricity. Uh, you might recall that early on in this mission the main battery for this probe shorted out. So I only have 15 units of electricity on this probe. So every maneuver I do has to make sure that I don't end up using up all of my electric charge because if that electric charge goes to zero the antenna turns off and because I have remote tech I will no longer have control of this vessel. Anyway, uh, I'm just using a bit of RCS. I'm going to push my periapsis out. Again, all I am interested in is just, I want to ensure I get a capture, but just, just barely, that's it. And then once I have a capture, um, everything else 
you know, can be dealt with after that. <laughs> I can, you know, getting a capture is just my only mission I really have right now. So uh, it's a little twitchy, but I think, I think right there, I think that's going to do it. So with that accomplished, we'll come back to the RMB in about four days when it's ready to come around the backside of Kerbin. But right now, it's time to head off to Minmus, where we will find Minmus 1, a little lander here that's got a mission to do some seismic scanning in a variety of locations on Minmus's surface. This was deployed uh, a couple of episodes ago by the Columbia Space Shuttle and is now getting into its location of Minmus. And uh, of course, what we got to do is we got to get ourselves a capture, which went without any real issues at all. Got the capture, and then of course, once the capture was accomplished, it was time to think about getting this thing down to its landing site. But uh, sorry, it's a busy place around Minmus. I got another mission to get to. And this is just a couple of hours after Minmus 1 performed its capture, and now it is uh, Minmus Station's turn form a capture. This is a space station I launched three episodes ago, ironically, uh, before Mimbus 1 was launched, but somehow got here after Mimbus 1 got here. Actually, I know what it did. I, I ended up doing this kind of more roundabout little route by accident. I uh, went out past Mimbus and getting it on the rebound, so to speak. But uh, again, capture into a 50 by 50 kilometer polar orbit, not a problem. And that finishes off this particular contract to put a station in and about Minmus. And I, right now I don't have any immediate plans for this station, but this station will undoubtedly be useful for me in the future. And finishing off that contract freed up another contract slot and I saw available there a mission to go over to the island airport and uh, visit the anomalies there. And so here we have Tamley and Bob doing just that, uh, that, you know, taking the nice short flight over to the island airport. And of course, once we land down at the island airport, it was just a matter of Tamley going out and checking out the burnt out capsule in the hangar, Bob checking out the top of the control tower, and then it was time to just turn around and head on back. Yes, I'm not going to give up on a mission that's this easy, you know, like if, there, if it's going to give me a mission that I can do for free with a vehicle that I had sitting in the hangar anyway, and the only thing it's going to cost me is a little bit of fuel, well, I'm all over that, even though this particular mission doesn't return that much. And with that accomplished, it was time to get back out to Minmus 1 and see if we can not put it down on the surface. So here we are time warping, and as you can see, I'm using the MapSat mod. Uh, you can see my waypoints there as to uh, where my landing sites are supposed to be. And I'm just time warping to the point where my trajectory is going to come pretty close to those waypoints. Uh, it's nice because, of course, this whole thing takes into account the rotation of Minmus. Of course, it wouldn't make any sense if it didn't. And, oh, 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 look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm not going to be able to get any better than that. So, uh, yeah, all we got to do now is time warp our way over to the other side of the planet and get ready to perform our descent. Okay, there we go, that ought to do it. Okay, let's put it on to the retrograde vector and get ready here. But uh, before I commit myself to this, I best make sure of my communication. Remember that my communication network around Minmus is not complete. It is one satellite short. And the last thing I want to find out is that I'm in a communication dark spot uh, when I'm on my descent and, oh, oh, this isn't looking too good. Here, let's let's zoom out just a little bit here. I can see one of my mapping or one of my communication satellites down at the bottom right, another one towards the left, and right around where my landing site is going to be, there is no communication site over that location. I think I stand a good chance of lo losing communication uh, over my landing site here. No, this isn't going to do. I'm not going to risk it. Uh, Minmus rotates around every couple of days, so all I have to do is wait another couple of days and uh, that landing site will come back underneath my trajectory in the sunlight again. So, uh, no sense on rushing it. So in the meantime, why don't we get ourselves back to Kerbin? 
the completion of that island airport mission uh, freed up another mission and this one was to take uh, some surface samples and some EVA reports on the surface of Kerbin. I thought that would be easy enough except if you take a look here oh yeah and here I am without my mountaineering equipment there is absolutely no way I'm getting this plane down in there uh, no this one is ridiculous so that's it that's a bail uh, I'm just gonna head on back and, uh, and I ended up just deleting this particular contract I went absolutely no way forget it not worth my time I'll take that tiny little reputation hit and uh, pick up something else and actually that something else turned out to be something quite a bit easier all I had to do was go out to ComSat 2 a satellite from a long long time ago and change its inclination to 9.5 degrees and you can see I already have the maneuver set up and ComSat 2 has tons of fuel in it there we go burning away and I'm just keeping an eye on my contract over there on the right just waiting for it to go green and there we go contract complete freebie can never pass up on a freebie so uh, yeah now I did end up Comsat 2 is actually still a functioning part of my communication system so I had to get in there and make sure its period was still uh, two hours so that it matched the other commsats and will remain in its correct position but that was no big deal uh, now it's time to get back to Minmus for a last time and get this landing out of the way and you have seen me do lots of landings before so I'm just gonna kind of cut to the chase here I want to get to my asteroid capture that is the main thing for this particular video so uh, yeah we're just coming in up to this waypoint there's a total of four of them I need to get obviously I've already uh, performed my descent burn and I'm just coming in here on this final approach and yeah I can see I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be coming a little bit short so uh, oops that's the wrong way I push myself a little bit this way All right, that looks pretty good. Minmus is so, oh, there we go. I was just about to say Minmus is so forgiving, but I can see now I am close enough, so I'm just gonna put myself down. So I'm gonna kill off the rest of my horizontal velocity. And just let myself come down to the surface. Just a few hundred meters to go. I'm playing around a little bit with the flight computer as you can see um, mostly because when I use the SAS the hand SAS on the thing I get that an annoying wobbly thing again not sure if it's easier to just deal with the wobble or easier to deal with the flight computer for something like this okay 40 meters oh see my shadow 20 meters Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's fall down a little bit further. Actually, this works pretty well, I think. I don't have to, you know, locking it into that retrograde surface vector. Boom! Down! Easy peasy, lemony squeezy. Okay, let's close that. And now we have to do a seismic scan. So where is that seismic? There it is. And we will log seismic scan. No science, but I don't care about science. This is about finishing off that contract, which actually does generate me some science, so I do care about science. Okay, let's go to the next one. Which one is closest? Oh, it's already picked the closest one for me. Oh, that's nice of the waypoint manager. I'm going over to beta. Okay, so let's take a look at these. Okay, that one's not beta. That one's beta. That's the one I'm going for over there. Oh, there are two of them really close together. Okay, so according to the waypoint manager, I got to head off at an heading of 228 degrees. So I'll sort of get my bearings here a little bit. So we're going to go on a heading of 228 degrees, tilt over to about 45 degrees, and just kind of, let's see, 228. Yeah, it's about that way. Okay. So let's see here. I think I'm all set. Okay, let's do it. 
tilt over to about 45 degrees, around 228. That, there, that ought to do it. Got the engines. We just got to coast on over there. And uh, basically just do the same thing and landing here turned out to be no big deal either. Okay, and touchdown. All right. Okay. Do my seismic scan. Where is my seismic scanner? It is on here somewhere. Seismic scanner, seismic scanner, seismic scanner. There it is. Okay, log seismic data. There we go. Oh, it's a twofer. I got the beta and the gamma at the same time. Nice. So just one more hop and plenty of fuel still left in the can. No issues whatsoever. And that one went also without a problem. And there we go. Contract complete. And for those keeping score at home, that is four contracts in this particular video. That is incredibly productive for me. I got a lot of videos where I don't get any contracts completed. No wonder I don't have very much money. But anyway, um, this of course freed up another contract slot. So I grabbed another contract. This one looked like another freebie taking me out to the moon. This is Muna 2, and longtime viewers might recognize this one as well. Uh, this was my first thing that I ever landed on another body. Way back in episode 20, this thing landed on the moon. It's been sitting there ever since. But now I have this contract to do a temperature scan, a low altitude temperature scan, uh, nearby to Muna 2. Now, I guess for squad, nearby is a relative term, because nearby turns out to be about... 200 kilometers away and this thing only has about 143 meters per second of delta v left in it so i but i thought oh what the hell this thing's not doing anything we'll try and sort of launch it into the right direction if uh, it, it won't land <laughs> i can tell you that it will it will hit the ground but it won't be a soft landing that's for sure um but if i can get below the waypoint I can do my temperature scan and finish off another contract. Now, let's see here. According to the waypoint manager, I got a head off at a heading of 197. So let's do this. Off we go, 197. And we'll just burn at 45 degrees until I run out of fuel, which did not take very long. This is not encouraging. Let's see what's happening here. Wait a minute. How am I going way down there? My waypoint's way over there. How did I get this to be so far off? Well, anyway, it wasn't going to be anywhere close. Anyway, clearly I didn't have the... Oh! Oh, my heading should have been 151 degrees. 197's the distance. Oh, well. <laughs> it wasn't going to work anyway. So, we'll watch this to the explosion, which actually turned out to be... Com not completely for nothing. Uh, I happened to have a couple of seismic recorders that were going on the moon that I completely had forgotten about, and a seismic event was recorded, and one of my other landers was able to transmit some of that science back to the Kerbal Space Center, so Muna 2, you did not die for naught. But uh, that's it. Enough shilla shallying, enough diving around between all these other missions. Let's get out to Arm B and see how this capture goes. So I'm just time warping. You can see I am going to be losing sunlight. So before I lose the sunlight, I do want to put this on the prograde vector. So there we go. Let's let's do this. So put it on the prograde. Now it's on retrograde prograde. Oh, it is going so slowly. There it goes. It is moving. And I've switched antennas. I'm now, I've closed that big dish antenna. I'm now on the Communitron because we're close enough to Kerbin for that thing to be picking up a signal. Uh, which means it does drain less power. The Communitron is definitely more efficient than the big dish antenna is as far as electrical consumption goes. But I will be losing sun and as soon as I lose the sun there's no way this thing will go through the night side of Kerbin without losing power. So I want to get everything sort of set up as well as I can. Let's see if we can not adjust this a little bit. So let's see, we'll put a heading of 125, a pitch, oh, about 40 degrees, I think, negative 40. Let's see what that looks like. 
I'd like to keep those solar panels perpendicular to the sun. Oh, they rotated a little bit too far. Okay, let's see. Let's put the roll at 45. There we go, 45 degrees. Custom. Well, that's rolling it the wrong way. Okay, well, well that's uh, 135 degrees. Hopefully that'll get it back the other way. I know it's thinking about it. Yep, yep, there we go. And oh, I've just lost the sun. I've just lost the sun. Okay, I just put it on the prograde vector. I do want this thing to do the best to just get around going prograde. Uh, basically, the idea here is that the heat shield or the uh, asteroid <laughs> is going to be my heat shield. So I would hopefully, I'm hoping that the asteroid will protect a lot of things because I am going to have to go through this with the solar panels up and with that commutatron up so that I remain in my connection. Oh, I just turned off the lights, but some of them are still going. Turn them off manually here and oh, they just went off on their own. And they just went off on their own because I've lost electricity. So now I have no control of this thing in any way whatsoever. <laughs> yep, we are at the point of no return. We're just going to have to ride this through and see what happens as we come off the other side. So we might as well just time warp until we hit the atmosphere. At least I am pointing prograde. So hopefully, I would think that the natural inclination of this thing would be to orient itself in a prograde direction with the big heavy asteroid at the front and the lighter rocket at the back. I think that should make sense. Makes sense to me. Okay, just about there. 70 kilometers, okay, we are at, we are now in the atmosphere officially. And Trajectories is still predicting a capture for me, so that is good. Okay. Everything's so, whoa, 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 it's drifting. Why is it turning around? Why is it turning around? No, don't tell me it's going to go through here backwards. That makes no sense. Why would you go around backwards? That's not going to allow my rock to be a heat shield. And, okay, it's, it's still rotating. Is it going to go back? Oh, we're getting heating effects. Oh, crap, a moly. Okay, it's turning around again. Come on, settle in in a prograde direction. You can do that. And Oh, shoot. The flight computer's not on prograde. <laughs> oh shoot, it wasn't on prograde all this time. Maybe I don't know if that was part of the problem or not. Now it is on prograde, but I don't think it matters because I don't have any electricity, so I don't have any reaction wheels, I don't have anything, and it's just tumbling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> if I lose a communitron, this thing is done. If I lose the solar panels, this thing is done. But wait a second, I'm getting pretty close to periapsis. I'm only 15 seconds from periapsis. And once I'm past periapsis, the worst of this is over. I'm on my way up and the atmosphere is getting thinner again. Ten seconds to periapsis. And it's still... I, I didn't see anything burn off or break off. Come on, RMB. You can hold together. Three seconds. We're almost at periapsis. Okay, we've just passed periapsis. We're on our way up. And this whole thing survived so far. But it should keep surviving. But it is tumbling badly. There's no doubt about that. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that the sun has risen again. And I do get these occasional uh, little, little, little bits of charge coming up on the battery, but then it just dies right away again. Um, it's draining power quickly, more quickly than it can generate it each time it kind of pops up into the sunlight from behind the asteroid. So uh, this is not going to good, but right now we're still a little low in the atmosphere. I want all this nonsense to sort of get out of the atmosphere, get out with the heating effects, and then see if I can get this under some control. But it certainly looks like to me it's not going to come back in control on its own. Okay, altitude 58 kilometers. We're going at, oh, oh, got some sort of camera change there for 
Woo, there we go, okay. Not sure why we got a camera change there. Almost at 60 kilometers, so we're just about out of the atmosphere. It's still moving at just under 3.3 kilometers per second, so we still have a lot of speed. Okay, yeah, this tumbling is certainly not going to stop on its own, and it's not going to charge this way either. I got to I gotta stop the tumbling if I'm going to get it to charge. So, um, let's see, can I kill? No. I see, I have no control because I have no charge. So all of this is not going to work. What if I just turn off the whole... Oh, go away, NVIDIA. <laughs> okay, let's see, can I, if I, just if I can get a brief there. If I just had a brief enough charge to give it a command, and there we go, but we are... We are certainly not in control. This is not good. I gotta. Okay, I know what I got. I gotta turn off the reaction wheels. If I can turn off the reaction wheels, I bet you this thing will begin to charge. So I gotta find. Oh, this. This is. Oh my gosh. This is futile trying to click on them. Uh, wait. Let's let's change the view here. Let's change the view to lock. Not chase lock. There we go. Now I can see it. Yes. Okay. Find that reaction wheel. Okay. That one's already off. There we go. Okay, so now the reaction wheels are off. The only thing that's on is the communitron, which I can't turn off. And I am now slowly picking up charge. Hoorah! Okay. I am slowly picking up charge. And when I have enough charge, I hopefully can turn back on those reaction wheels. It is charging slowly. I can see that with... Although it, it's going up and down the electrical charge with each orbit, or each orbit, each revolution, it's a little more charged than it was the last time it went around. So this should work. Just got to be patient. So it's peaking up around 7. Oh, I've got up to 7 units of electrical charge, so I'm just going to wait till it gets close to around 10 units of electrical charge at its maximum and then I'll put on this custom one that will orient it in a happy way with the sun. There we go. Let's do it. Okay, let's turn on the reaction wheels. There we go. And let's turn on the RCS too. We need everything that we can get to try and slow this tumbling. Oh, I is it I think it's already starting to slow down. I think this is working. Oh, oh, the RCS turned off for us. Oh, oh. oh, it turned off again. Oh, I know what's going on. Every time the electricity gets down to zero, I lose my communication. And I lose control, and the RCS just keeps turning on and off. <laughs> but it's definitely spinning more slowly now. It's coming under some control. Yes. Oh, look at that. Well, you can see that this is working and that eventually I did get this thing under control. It turned out at that moment I realized I didn't have my capture after all. So I actually had to burn a little bit retrograde in order to get my capture, but that wasn't that big a deal. And then it was time to set up my maneuver to get my inclination down to zero. This is the whole reason why I set my incoming trajectory to be at such a, a crazy angle like this to push out. Well, in this case, it's going to be my equatorial ascending node way as far out from Kerbin as I can because that will make my inclination change cheaper. So that's where I'm going to be setting up my node. And not only to come out to be cheaper, uh, this 131 meter per second burn, which got my inclination down to zero, not only accomplished the inclination change, but got me my moon encounter. Yes, I am so excited. I got the moon encounter with just a single burn. Uh, that moon encounter is going to be over 37 days from now. So uh, it's going to be a bit of a wait before it gets there. But uh, get there it will. And obviously that's going to have to be for a future episode. So I'm going to be wrapping this one up. I thank you for watching and hope to see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.